Well, hi everyone. Welcome to Speed Tips by Bob and Chad. We're here tonight at the Boone Speedway um, due to some uh, cold weather issues and, and dark or getting a little darker. Uh, our good buddy uh, and our friends there at Motorsports Warehouse uh, let us come into their shop and we're actually doing this uh, in the outside of the or inside away from the elements tonight uh, here with Chad Weirs. Once again, we're doing a live show here. I uh, can't thank Brent enough for his hospitality. Um, talk about the weekend. How was your weekend, Chad? Where, did you go any races? Or No, I took a, a Friday, Saturday off to get ready to come here and uh, relaxed and fished a little bit and caught some fish that we'll eventually hear one night. I uh, got ready for the big week here. So it's already been a busy couple days and uh, things are looking good until maybe the rain comes here. So Yeah, the weather's not looking really great for tomorrow. I know it's definitely going to be cold and we'll have to see, but hopefully that everything will go good. If we don't get a lot of rain, they've got the equipment here to get the racetrack worked in. Uh, the pit area can be kind of a little bit miserable, but they do a good job. Um, Speaking of that fishing thing, you showed me a picture today of number one son and, and this yeah. huge honking fish that was almost as tall as he was. Yeah, unfortunately, I missed uh, my son putting another one on the wall. So he's got a, a crappie on the wall and a walleye on the wall, and he got a 40-inch northern today. So Wow. Uh, we're officially, I think, nicknaming him Big Fish. So. I guess so. He does an awesome, he's doing an awesome job. Well, we had a good weekend. Uh, of course, we started here. Uh, I've been here since Saturday. Uh, we had the uh, um, prelude to the Super Nationals. Uh, awesome event. Had 412 race cars here for that, for a one-night show. Um, unbelievable. Uh, my good buddy and, and employee, Rocky Cottle, ended up winning the uh, uh, Sport Mod event, which congratulations to him. Uh, he worked really hard uh, this year and uh, driving uh, uh, Tim Judd's car, and uh, man, he pulled it off. Uh, it was uh, uh, an exciting race, and so that was pretty exciting. And the races were good all night long on Saturday, so it was a good kind of work up to what the Super Nationals is going to be. Yeah, awesome. Well, if there's anybody out there that you got any questions or whatever, feel free. We're, we're going to still do our question and answer thing. Uh, uh, tonight here at the Speedway, of course, they run, you know, st the actual Super Nationals starts uh, today on Monday, runs through Saturday. Uh, tonight, they are running the uh, Sport Mods. I think they'll have one feature for the Sport Mods, and then they'll run two features for the Hobby Stocks to qualify some Hobby Stocks. And then the, the late model shows tonight. And tomorrow night, they'll run two features to to qualify for the sport mod and then one more for the hobby stock and then i think the um, cruiser cars are are here tomorrow night so so it's an interesting event then wednesday we start the modifieds and i know they're already i don't know what their pre-entry list actually is but they said it was larger than the car count they had last year so if the weather just gives us a little bit of a break, uh, it's going to be awesome. And once again, those of you guys that are out of state uh, and want to, you can sure watch any of these events on IMCA TV. Um, they do an awesome job with the racetrack uh, to keep it smooth. And, and it's, it's just going to be a good show. So when we talked about here the last three weeks, we've been kind of talking about this unveiling of some new product from Weir's Machine and Manufacturing. So let's, uh, I'm going to turn this over to Chad and let's see this new product. Yeah, we actually unveiled it here today and uh, had some pretty good reviews, but this is our new uh, new stagger stick that we, we've been working on all summer. So this is a, this will be a digital deal. So you, you'll be able to go up and measure the one tire and then you hit the button and it'll keep that measurement and then you go measure the other tire and it'll tell you what the circumference of that one is and the stagger automatically so this is a the new tool that we've been working on uh testing all summer long getting the bugs worked out of it we went with a digital touch screen uh these products are 
uh, readily available. So we decided to use this company uh, with this touchscreen. We're going to actually use this touchscreen also moving forward on our dual sticks. So oh, awesome. This is a pretty powerful little computer, I guess. You well, that call. thing is pretty cool. So, it calculates uh, everything for you. Yeah. So there's no guesswork. You just automatically know what yeah. you have for stagger. That's going to be slick. Yeah. So you can measure stagger in like 10 seconds or whatever that takes. So wow. it takes longer to run around the car. Than yeah, I can stagger, see so. that. That's pretty cool. So we're, we're excited about this one. Uh, we're actually going to file the patent on this one. So uh, should be a good deal. We are uh, we should have some black ones here ready to go this week to sell. And, okay. Uh, these are going to retail at nine fifty, so they'll be available to ship soon. Awesome. So what else have you got going on this week down here at the Super Nationals? Uh, I know you had a t-shirt sale on some yeah. last year's shirts. We blew out our old t-shirts, and uh, we got a few parts we pulled off of Brent's display here. We are, are trying to sell at a discounted price, but other than that, uh, it's been busy. We've been servicing pull bars and sliders. Uh, pretty much all day. Austin's been on the trailer uh, working pretty hard and uh, it's been a good good start so far. We got everybody, most of the guys dialed in and ready to rock and roll. So the modified has got a lot more components. So the sport mods, they have sure. solid links. So the, the mod stuff has got a lot more work to be done there. So we did That's see it. a slider today that uh, hadn't been taken apart in over a year and it was pretty bad. I bet that was pretty bad. So, uh, you know, again, the maintenance is important and you know, no better time than before the Super Nationals to get that baby freed up and, and working right. But that's uh, very important to keep that. Well, you know, it, I mean, at least they're thinking they're doing it today instead of uh, Thursday. Yeah, after the first night. Right? After the first night, and like, they don't know what happened, why the car just doesn't want to work. So my car was junk cool. last night. Yeah, my oh. car was junk. I don't know what happened. Oh, the slider doesn't go up and down very good. Oh, huh. no doubt. Well, that's the thing, you know, and this, and that. And the thing that's nice about this, one thing about it is people can bring the stuff to you now. So, you know, you're here. And I know Bobby's been super busy with shocks and, and people bringing shocks in. And I know some of the other guys have been super busy and watch pails and shocks going by. And so uh, that's one advantage, you know, early you can get your stuff ready. So like, especially the modified guys that they came to run the uh, Saturday night show, uh, and so they've been here for a while. So now they can get, they have the time to work on their stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, with the vendors that are here, or whether it be fast shafts, whoever, you can bring your stuff and get it ready to go. So you're ready come Wednesday. Yeah, it's so, so important for us as manufacturers to be here at such a large event. I mean, there's people from all over the country that we, we get to see, you know, only a couple of times a year, either here or Vegas or or even the PRI show. So uh, it's nice to get out and interact and work on the, the stuff with them and, and teach them how to maintenance them and, and work on it. And it's nice that the Super Nationals is a large event and a big platform for all of us to get together and, and hang out out here. All yeah. those manufacturers get to, I mean, we grill together and hang out and and uh, it's, a, it's a fun week for sure. And uh, we're just, we're glad to be a part of it and be here and, and help our customers. Yeah, and I missed it today because I had to go run an errand, so Garrett ended up getting my hamburger. Yeah. Oh, well, tomorrow I'll be a little more ahead of things. <laughs> but anyway, no, it, it is a good deal. You know, we get to hang out, and we're right between the Afro trailer and the Weir's trailer, so, you know, we're kind of a tight-knit group. Ben and Chad and I have done seminars together, and, and so it's a lot of fun. And, and I had a guy, one of the guys was at the Pennsylvania school come up, and and he's here racing. Really? Yep. Oh. Come up and talk to me quite a bit and was very complimentary about how great the school was. And he says, I hope you're coming back this year because I got three more people I'm going to bring with me. Yeah. And, and so I, I told him, you know, we'll just kind of have to see you know, where this COVID thing goes. But, you know, we're planning on going back there if everything everything goes good. It was a, a great, great school out there. Had a lot of people come up and, and thank us for doing the show. And and uh, one guy says, you know, told me today, he says, you have no idea how much you guys have helped my program just listening to your show every Monday night. And he says, I haven't missed one. Yeah. I had one guy, uh, Chris Frisbee, he came from Idaho, I think. He yeah. Was Oregon. Yep. He said he was, listened to all episodes on the way here. All 18 of them, I guess. This must be 19. Yep. So that's a 20 hour trip. You get to get all the Bob and Chad. Yeah, there you go. You get to <laughs> listen to everything. Yeah. Um, 
So go ahead. We got you have a couple questions. questions. So moving up from Wasoda B mod to Wasoda A mod, any advice to make the transition easier? Um, you know, those cars, the biggest thing with those cars is the rear suspension is your big difference. Um, and, and people can look at that, that that can be kind of confusing. But, you know, if your chassis manufacturer's got a good basic setup, go with their setup. And, and, and like Chad and I have talked numerous times, you know, stay in your notebook, make some changes when you can. If you get some practice nights, you know, like if you're going to a show and they have a practice night, make sure you go to the practice night with kind of a list of things you're going to change. Uh, biggest thing you're going to see a difference, of course, is horsepower. Uh, they've got more horsepower. They've got a, a spoiler on them. So they're, you know, they're actually more stable and they just actually go faster. Um, but it's not as big of a change as what you would think. Um, it's just... Just don't get yourself out of the box. That's that's the biggest thing. When you see there's five holes here and there's five holes here and another five over here and another five over here, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to use all 20 of those holes. Right, exactly. And, and so, you know, just kind of keep with the basics until you learn it, you know, make a change, you know, drop a bar uh, on, the, on the cage one night, see kind of what the car feels like and, and, you know, definitely talk to other people that are running the same car um, that you, you know, that you're running and, and get input that you can. But uh, uh, the transition isn't as difficult as what we've, in fact, we've actually seen some guys transition out of a B mod into an A mod and ran better in the A mod car. Yeah. Uh, just because you've got the adjustments that you can make and works pretty well. Matt's uh, asking, "What are the what are your thoughts on running extreme left bar angle on a Northern Sport mod?" Well, I'm not sure what the definition of extreme would be, but what we actually do on our Sport mod cars, when the car's at static height, we run at around 28 degrees. Um, that's a pretty healthy angle. But that drive angle definitely gives you a lot of steer, but it gives you a lot of traction. So you get the best of both worlds. The car steers, so it rotates in, can kind of roll around the bottom better, and then it tractions up off. But what I actually do, my main point is jacking underneath the seat to the chain's tight. Once the chain gets tight, it's very important that you don't go over that 45 degrees in a dynamic mode. If you start flirting more than that 45 degrees, all of a sudden now the, the trailing arm's trying to push up too much and it's not working in a transfer mode where it's trying to actually lift and transfer weight. It's just trying to be a povo stick. And you get on a rough racetrack, that thing's going to be a mess. I mean, it's just going to be a handful to drive for sure. Cody asks, how much are you uh, referring to the new Steger stick? If that's the case, it's nine fifty is what they're going to retail at. Uh, David says, Chad, did you have any other new product unveilings? Thought I heard about a spring cup. Yep, we, uh, we, were, we were supposed to have the spring cup here, and there was a miscommunication between me and another fella, and uh, we don't have one here. There's one in a – there's a couple in a race – a couple race cars yep. here. Um, Maybe we should have got that out today and brought it to the show. Wasn't thinking, but they'll be coming soon. Uh, it's you know, it's basically a spring cup with an outside lip on it. So, yeah, and any watching. of those guys that are attending the show, there's one on Jake McBurney's car, the '82 car in the modified. He's got one on his. Um, I I really like them. It holds it holds the spring secure. But with the bearing inside, now all of a sudden the spring doesn't have that bind on it. So when the car goes through its motion, uh, the spring just works more in a natural manner. It's not trying to twist and bind and, and create additional things that the spring is not supposed to do. So they're going to work pretty good. And Chad already promised that BHE will get the first 50. <laughs> Dan says, could you explain how <clears throat> you use the threaded rod to set the weight jack bolt in the front? Well, what we do, Dan, is we take that, uh, uh, we actually 
cut the nut out of the weight jack bolt that's in there. We, so there's, there's a hole in there. And then we put a new nut on a threaded rod. And then the threaded rod goes all the way through the middle of the spring, like if it was a shock or whatever. So then we compress that spring so that it's pretty much compressed. Then we lift the spring up in the frame to the point where it bottoms out on the frame. And then that's where we actually weld the nut on after that fact. So then when the spring is completely bottomed out, the actual weight jack bolt is perfectly in the center of the spring and it's in the angle that the spring needs to be going at towards the uh, spring pocket in the lower control arm. So, and the thing that once you do this, you're, you you got to remember we're doing this for dynamic movement because if you look at it after you weld it in static mode, you're going to go, well, that thing is crooked as could be. Well, it's going to be, but the car never sees the static mode. I mean, the, the car is always over on the right front, and it's at least three inches of travel, and most of the time it's it's bottoming that A-frame out. So to get the full effect of that spring, so we're not changing spring rate by riding on one side or the other, that works really good. Adam. Says, is that spring cup going to be IMC and Northern Sport Mod legal and pre orders after Bob's 50? Question mark, LOL. So, we actually had a little bit of a panic today here in tech after a Sport Mod uh, heat race. Uh, a gentleman came over and had one of our spring cups and said that they told him it was illegal. So the uh, swivel cup. The swivel cup. And uh, there was a little miscommunication there. You can't have a swivel cup on the rear of a Sport Mod. You can okay, have it on front. the front. Whoever the tech man was, maybe just got his ends of the car mixed up as far as the reading in the rule book. But uh, I did talk to, to Dave, the head tech for IMCA, and that is uh, that is definitely legal to have a bearing cup in the front. And just because it's an OD grab isn't really going to change anything. Yeah, so. I don't see where the rules are. That's gonna, I, I don't see where there's yeah. going to be any reason that this won't be legal because uh, it's the same principle. We're just grabbing the OD instead of trying to grab the ID. Um, so I don't see where that's going to be a problem yeah. with IMCA. Dan's asking how you hold the spring collapsed when you're doing that. Well, that's a little tricky because we got this apparatus. What we did is we took one of Chad's cups and we knocked the bearing out of it. So we got a nut in there that squeezes that spring down into the A-frame. And then we've got a welded bracket on the A-frame that bolts into the shock hole for that uh, uh, ready rod that goes through there. Now, we use a fairly soft spring because when you go yeah. trying to compress something that's pretty stiff, um, it's a little on the sketchy side. Yeah, it definitely uses soft springs. So, so like, I think our, yeah, I think our jig, we use a 400 pound spring and, and we just compress compress it with the spring cup as if there were you know as if we were using a spring cup, but we just knock the bearing out and then put a nut in there so that it squeezes it together. It well, looks like we're caught up on questions. We got anybody else out there that's got some questions? Otherwise, hopefully the weather holds out. It's going to be yeah. a long week if we got to fight rain for a few days. That's, this place is never fun when you have rain. And, of course, you know our high is going to be pretty low because actually just in the last hour and a half, the temperature must have dropped oh, 20 man. degrees. And uh, so that's a little bit of a challenge. Um, makes it kind of miserable for everybody. But like I said, the track workers here, uh, they've got a jet dryer. They've got all the equipment that if, if it just doesn't rain a lot, you know, they'll still work it to get it in. I mean, I, I've seen these guys make miracles out of this place. Now, I'm not saying, you know, tomorrow or you know, Tuesday night show might get finished at 5 a.m. on Wednesday, but yeah. they will get it. They'll do whatever they can to get it in. That was a couple of years ago, right? We yeah. Two shows in one day and ran all night. And yep. Finished at six in the morning. Or yep. Something. Yep. Been there, done that. They'll do whatever it takes to get it in. Yeah, they no will. It. And like I said, it. they got the equipment. Yeah. So they do a phenomenal job keeping the show rolling. Yep. Talon says, IMCA 
Southern Sport Mod metric frame, what is the advantage to running a shortened right rear shock shaft? Same for the left front shock. Well, what you're doing there is you're trying to limit the travel. Um, and in the short shaft right rear, you know, that was actually kind of around before we could leave it even legally run a chain because we used to actually put a seven inch shaft in a nine inch body so that uh, the rear the right rear couldn't come up could only come up to a certain angle it couldn't gain any more um, the left front short shaft thing what that's going to do of course is that's going to help keep the car off the right rear a little bit um, the other thing that it's going to do is once you, know, you have to kind of imagine that when the left front comes up, the weight transfers diagonally to the right rear. And so when weight's transferring to the right rear, you're loading the right rear more. Well, if you stop that motion or slow that motion down, then when it can't move to the right rear, it directly moves to the left rear, which gives you more traction off the corner. Um, the big thing is, is you got to be a little careful with that. If, if you're running a short shaft left front, and you get just a tick of a throttle push in the middle, that kind of means that you need to extend that shaft. Now, with your sport mod guys, whether it's a northern sport mod or whether it's a, um, you, you can't run a left front chain in either one of those sport mod divisions. So you almost have to do it with a shock. And it, and it works pretty, I mean, it, it works very well. And, you know, the downside to it you might end up having to have a couple different links left front so you can adjust uh, accordingly. And what we actually do is we shorten the shaft for the customer and then we actually put an extension on it if they need to extend it. So we've got basically two measurements, one's an inch longer than the other. Dan, AMOD, no rule against bump stops. Any thoughts on the right front? Well, how many shows ago was that? We had our buddy yeah, Jason. Yeah, I so. definitely would try to go back, Dan, and, and look at that show that uh, uh, Jason Embers was on. Uh, that guy knows bump stops better than anybody I've ever talked to. Um, I'm not real familiar with bump stops because, of course, in most of the stuff that we do, we don't get to run a bump yeah. stop. So I'm assuming you're a UMP modified. So I think they're the only mod basically that has no rule as far as height and, right. and the component or the compounds you can use or whatnot. So Jason at RE Suspension does a, a phenomenal job selling all different kinds of bump stops from foam to neoprene to Belleville washer stacks to anything you can imagine. And there's so many options there that I would talk to him and explain it well and there's one and he'll send you he's got one of these staff members does a lot of dirt racing i don't remember what that guy's name he told us that night because he said well he said i got one guy that is kind of our dirt expert but if you call there and ask for jason he'll definitely yeah. get you in the right direction jason was on episode 11. episode so 11. and find episode 11 with jason yep steve reynolds uh, actually, the inspiration behind the two-barrel carb cover for the Rochester. Uh, he's asking if uh, those are going to be made anytime soon, and they are in line, Steve. Uh, so I would watch for them in the next month, probably. So, and thank you for for bringing that to our attention that there was a need for a Rochester carb hat. But uh, Steve had us do some prototype, and we made a 3D print of the. A Rochester carb hat and I was surprised that after all these years nobody had made one so hmm. uh, he sent us the carburetor and everything and we got them 3d printed to test them and uh, actually gonna machine them out of plastic so well, them are coming soon there's a lot of those carburetors out there yeah, yeah. Hmm. I was surprised I couldn't find one so well thank heavens that you have Weir's machine because they can make anything up that's there. right uh, Ken, four bar angles, rear to chassis, best to set at ride height or static? Or you must mean ride height is static. So it's, are you saying ride height or dynamic? Static would be basically ride height, right? Right, and static would be ride dynamic. height. Most of the bar angles are set statically based on your scaled, right. ready to rock and roll ride heights uh, is what most of the world references. But then also referencing your 
full extended not to over index your suspension cage so there's kind of a yeah really the, the, the really the only one that i ever checked in dynamic mode is left rear yeah because that's the one that's crucial that if you're too much there it can over index and can cause some problems or whatever but as far as your bar angles you know we're pretty you know normally that that right rear upper bar angle is usually in that uh 18 to 20 degrees 18 seems to be the number that i've always used as a starting point uh, the lower usually is around three degrees uh, and it will vary your, your lower has a lot to do with corner entry um, so you know if you're running a little bit if the car's a little snug getting in uh, that raising that lower will help you uh, and opposite if the car's a little bit loose getting in lowering the lower would help you um, the the left rear once again you know the left rear we usually start in that dynamic or the static mode around 28 degrees but the magical number in the dynamic mode seems to be in that 45 to 48 degree mode um, left rear there's been a lot of different uh things tried this year um we're seeing you know 10 degree angle on that that left lower and, and that seems to produce a lot of steer but it also seems to give you quite a bit of traction for sure Talon says, thanks, Bob. Neil is saying, any dates set for the Race Tech Info? Question mark. Will you be doing an online version to watch live too? Question mark. Uh, we will not be doing the online version. Um, we do have the, uh, the, um, the online version from last year. Uh, that's available to be purchased at any point in time. It, it, you can purchase it now um the school dates the the two link and the in the, the two link three link school is going to be january 15th and 16th uh at our Ames location the four link is going to be february 5th and 6th um and we have not actually set a date uh on that pennsylvania school uh it would be the first weekend in march uh is what that's going to be our stock car school is uh February, yeah, February 26th and 27th. Any thought, are we going to do it in person? Or in person? Are we going to have people? We're going to do it? Are we going to cap it? Or, um, or he's asking not, about a live show, like if we got all of us together and did a live show and streamed it live? Well, that, that's I, a, what I mean, that's a possibility. It depends. We're going to see what, you know, this whole COVID thing does. Yeah. Um, there's a possibility on the sport mod school. That's usually our largest school at our shop. Uh, I've thought about doing two of them and limiting it to like 30 people because our place will hold 60 people real comfortably. So if we cut it in half, there would be enough for that six foot space in between. But we're, we're kind of just waiting to see how this all comes out yeah. and, uh, and, uh, we're going to try to make the decision here, you know, sometime first part of November on what we're going to do there. A lot of weird decisions. Like, you know, we used to never care. I mean, you go to a trade show and there's people coughing. And yeah, you never even thought hands. about it. You don't know where their hand was. Yeah, and, and now, now you're all just. All of a sudden, we're just like, holy cow, we can't even get together. Yeah, now it's kind of like, you know, dude, I, I want to shake your hand, but I can't afford to get sick. Yeah, I risked it today. I shook a bunch of hands. Well, I, I have two, but a lot I'm of just, hand sanitizer. Yes. Uh, Ken's asking. Speaking of the right rear bar, point towards the door. That is not good. If it's pointing towards the door, right rear. No. The right rear top rod on a. I assume you're talking on a mod, but the right top rod. If you're, you're talking bar toe standing at the back of the race car looking at the right side bars at the top one should actually point towards the left front tire so that in a dynamic state it straightens Correct. itself out if the right rear starts straight in a static state it's going to point towards point the door to the outside in a dynamic state and when you hit the fuel it transfers the load through them bars and that's going to be a, a straight push to the fence yeah so it's going to try to take it to the fence i assume you're talking bar toe there and that right top rod gets a lot of motion just like the left the left the right bottom rod kind of just 
rolls over it and doesn't have to be yeah it's not as critical in fact our right lower bar we actually tow it out just a little bit because when it rolls it tows it in yeah alan i need dry slick track with a b mod would you be better off having the springs on the control arms or on the front of the rear a new control arm bracket okay springs on the control arms i'm not arm. yeah that's yeah. a swing arm car i'm not super that if you've got traction there's nothing that's going to drive better than a car on swing arms i mean that and a leaf spring car is probably going to be the easiest thing to drive the downside is that they're short on traction so and then you have a ratio you know like you'll have to when you, you it's like a 60 40 ratio so like if you ran a 200 pound spring on the housing you'd end up having to put about a 325 to a 350 spring up on the uh the trailing arm because the ratio motion of where it's hooked to the frame and in, in relationship to the rear you'd have to have that just to hold the car up so it's, it's and it's and it's a little more difficult to adjust you know, being able to put trail and lead in it, it's more difficult. Uh, myself, if you know, if this is a like a Lesota type B mod or a USRA B mod where I can run sliders, I definitely would run sliders. You can preload the spring like the A mod guys do, uh, and, and it just works a lot better. Uh, sport mod, your you know rules state they have to be on top of the house. David, have you messed with the right rear lower on the cage adjustments, like moving up or down, UMP, A mod? That's huge. The right bottom rod has is, is kind of been one of my favorites. Uh, up on the cage, kind of frees the car up in on entry and gives you traction off the corner. That's a very, a lot of guys do it either on the frame or the cage. So the frame is going to be not as effective as the cage. If you do it on the cage, it's going to be, a larger change a more drastic change than on the frame and a lot of times when we do that i move the whole bar up so i don't change the angle, angle. Yeah. um because then you're not necessarily well you're still changing the steer a little bit but not a lot but uh it's a leverage factor when you have that up higher closer to the axle it will give you a ton of traction off the corner yeah. uh, sometimes it can be a little bit tight in the middle that's where a lot of times I'll tell guys and they look at me like I've got rocks in my head. I'd move it up and increase my stagger. And they're like, whoa, this is a dry slick racetrack. And it's like, dude, trust me, that's going to tighten you up enough through the middle that you're going to be able to roll the middle faster than everybody with the stagger. And then you're just going to come off like Jack the Bear. Yeah. Whose car you got in the booth? Um, the car we have in the booth is Isaac Malicote. He's a little wheel man. He's about this tall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got to meet I, him yesterday. I, yeah, I, I would have to say, like, to Mason, he would stand yeah. in his chin. He's 14. He's, he's, about, he's, he's about Cam's size. Yeah. Boy, he's a little guy. And yeah. the seat, we put the seat in that car. I swear that seat couldn't have been 11 inches. Yeah. That thing looks beautiful, I a lot of compliments on it and you guys do a fantastic job putting them things together and yeah that car came out good yeah, it looks good uh, we've got some new things on that car we've got the three-piece spindles on it uh we've got some close upper a-frames on it so we've changed the upper a-frame a little bit to kind of help stabilize the the angle movement of the upper a-frame and we're gonna find out next friday night he's gonna race it at marshalltown That's what he said he's all excited to jump in and yeah he, he says he said today he says i'm not so sure because he he kind of got a bad draw or had a, he kind of had a bad situation in the heat race where he got black flagged which you know whatever it's racing it's the way it goes and if they got to make a call they make a call and it's just the way it is but he was depressed enough to that where he was ready to take that thing home and start taking the motor out of it <laughs> that ruined his whole week yep and then i guess they got the car sold some guy in california bought that car his old car here already yeah wow so that worked out great they're yeah. they're excited well, we're about halfway. We need some more. Okay, that the question Alan's got, um, he, he, his original question talked about the front of the rear 
a new control arm bracket. I'm not sure, Alan, what you're talking about on the control arm brackets. Um, That's the same guy who's asking about the beam rod. Yeah. I'm talking about putting it on the control arm. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Now, you know, one thing that you could, you know, could do, I mean, I think you've got some um, brackets that clamp on and then you weld the top ring in that mount, mount, mount it so you can, if you're, you could go either way if you wanted to pretty easy but i i just think you would have a better car with the control arm mounts on the rear end itself yeah. I, I just think it's easier to adjust and more consistent what else did you learn today well i'll tell you what you know that's the thing with the super nationals you learn something every day uh i think i learned so much stuff i don't remember how much you guys stuff still I still haven't built any hills or added more trees because it's still windier and uh, down here well it's because three weeks ago we lost all of our dang trees that uh, what do they call it derange Durang? i don't know it's derrico derrico is what they call it it's actually a land hurricane Jesus. but they call it a derrico and man i tell you what that came through here and it raised heck with the crops i mean the poor a lot of those farm fields the the, the corn is flattened like it came through here with a freaking roller and of course now i get to plant new trees that probably i don't know are gonna get i hope they get to a little bit of height in my lifetime but i'm not super sure they're gonna get where they were okay here we go we got andy back to your b mod spring location with soda car what would you what would your pick be for the spring location sounds like on the slider and in front of the housing if so would you preload a soft spring for the left rear and tip inboard on the top to create lift um yeah andy i would agree with that um that's the advantage that by running the slider you can preload that spring kind of like what the uh the a mods are doing I think that works very well. I, I like the angle because it definitely will create lift. Um, sometimes you, you got to drive that setup a little different. You got to really focus on keeping it up on the bars to get it, you know, so that the car stays loaded all the time. But it loads very quickly. Uh, I think it's got real good instant traction. But the key to the instant traction is preloading that spring. Uh, like with our northern sport mods, you know, we don't really have a way of preloading that spring without raising our deck height. So that's why the slider thing, in my opinion, is, is definitely the way to go. Oh, our, our old Tom buddy Silver. Yeah, yeah says, our old buddy Tom. Have a good week, guys. Stay dry from all the rain. Yeah, our old buddy Tom used to come down and hang out with us all the time, but now I think he's he's married and he's got uh, more stuff going on. So, Tom, you just need to, as soon as the rain quits, you just need to come down and hang out with us a couple days. It's not that long of a drive. Yeah. Mike says on G60, would you run 19s all the way around and try to get stagger best you can or run just the crowned 20 on the right rear to get stagger? Uh, that's what I run 19s all the way around with the crowned right rear um, with that beadlock on that right rear you know the air pressure uh, you don't notice the crown as much I definitely do not run a 20 on any of the front tires because you, you lose about you know, on a front tire without the flex and the load of the actual suspension you don't get that flat surface like you would uh, with a, a 19, like you do 20. So I always run the three 19s and then I'll run a 20 to get the stagger. Shannon on a Northern sport mod on a dry slick track, what would be a good starting angle on the right rear bar? On a real dry slick racetrack, um, we're in that three degrees. Um, not a lot of angle on there. You kind of want to keep that so the it, as it rolls over it kind of gets to a negative angle and the car or that that corner of the car kind of comes forward a little bit it'll definitely come off the corner better without that angle so uh, i'd definitely go that route 
Uh, when the racetrack is, we basically, like on our GRTs, we call it hole three and hole four. Uh, hole four is probably about seven degrees. Uh, that's what we'll run uh, in a qualifying event. And then we go to hole three, which is about three degrees um, for a, a slick event. Mike, I'm getting ready to put my Weir's heavy left rear combo. I have attached the floater to the cage and was wondering if I need to run the floater bar to the frame with it attached to the cage. Uh, no, you do not run them at the same time. Uh, if you're going to clamp the brake to the cage, you unhook the floater rod. The only time you run the brake floater rod is when you're unhooked from the cage. So okay. you do not run them together. It will not rotate or it'll be bound up. Jeff Green, on a A mod four bar, is it better to have the J bar half inch below center on rear end or stiffen right rear spring to tighten entry and middle on a slick track? Well, the J bar, it, it kind of depends on the slick racetrack. If you're in a momentum situation, I would run the stiffer spring. If you're in a racetrack that's more of a stop and go type deal where you have to drive the car in really straight and then turn it, and especially if you're going to want to turn it and go around the bottom, I would do the J bar. Normally I run the J bar at zero. And then in this situation, I will drop it a half. Like, like if we were racing the, the Boone tonight, the way the racetrack has been, it's been really dry and with the wood chips and stuff, it's been a little on the crummy side. So I definitely go to the J bar on that type of racetrack. Cody asks, the IMCA Northern Sport Mod, dry slick pan -air bar angle, flatter, say 10 degrees or more, tight, small, 3 eighths. Um, on a tight, small, 3 eighths, and it's just like I, 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 I kind of talked to, uh, we have a lot of Sport Mod guys that are experiencing the racetrack being a little bit freer. And, and like I, I've kind of explained it to them, that's the thing that's different about the Super Nationals, which a lot of times it kind of hurts the local guys because we have so many laps on the racetrack that the racetrack gets pretty slick, but it's not an abrasive slick, it's a crummy slick. And so we've kind of had to go to more J-bar angle on these guys to help them keep that right rear stuck. Uh, as a rule of thumb, what I always measure is from the center of the axle housing down and my heat race event or my heat race would be about three inches or three and a half inches from the center down and then i go to four inches when the racetrack's real slick and then uh, i'm up an inch above the housing on the frame um, i couldn't actually tell you where that angle is i'm thinking it's about a 15 degree angle northern sport mod on a dry slick that moves Northern Sport Mod on a dry slick. What would be a good starting angle for the right rear bar? Did we already change that? Did um, we already answer that one? I thought we did. Or is that a different question? Oh, he's just asking better to change it on the chassis or the bracket. Um, well, on a Northern Sport Mod, believe it or not, it's kind of the same thing like Chad was talking about on a four link. Um, we might not change the angle of the bar, but I'll raise it up on the on, on the rear end and on the frame because that definitely will give the car more traction off the corner. IMCA modified. Have an older spring puck pull bar. Looking for an upgrade. What would you recommend? Well, the bars that Chad has are, are very well. And like this weekend here, um, Chad's got the different color biscuits. Well, on a racetrack like this tonight, where you're having a little bit of uh, traction issues, solid is going to have give you the most traction that you could have. The downside to that, though, is a solid. It's easier to break tires loose on a racetrack that's kind of crummy or that doesn't have any grip. So that's where I don't know what the rate would be, but like your purple. Your, your big biscuit purple yeah. bar works very well at this place because it gives you some initial movement before it starts to get stiffer and that allows the car to kind of get up underneath you and then it hooks up and goes pretty good. So um, that big biscuit bar that Weir's has uh, works very, very well. Yeah, we've today we've worked on 
just about all of our configurations, the closed small puck, the open big puck, the spring with the puck. So we got guys that win races at all of them. All of it's, them yeah. it's more about what you feel, what you like. The spring bar tends to decel harder, I would say, and kind of break traction and free you up on entry where the pucks, as they're traveling and then they release, there's a little bit of a split second where they don't decel so hard. So some guys like that feel where it isn't deceling hard and they can drive in the corner harder and not sheer traction. But it's, I mean, it's really about the driver and, and what he feels he likes. Yeah, the puck bar definitely will make the car a little snugger getting in. The, the spring bar tends to free the car up a little bit better. Um, it's it's back to the driver and his foot and what he really likes because yeah. um, I'd like to say there's a whole bunch of magic because there's a lot of people that have sold people a lot of magic over the years. Um, but it's just get one that's consistent. Uh, that uh, big biscuit bar, the biscuits don't wear out. For, I mean, they heck, they go a season usually. 69. Yeah, 60 yeah. nights. So you don't have to mess with it. You bold it in. You check the preload periodically. And it's pretty simple. Some of them others are pretty difficult. That's what we focus on is just something you don't have to work on every two or three nights or get some longevity out of it and, you know, get some good life out of it and good right. traction. And, you know, we've been trying to find magic in a pull bar for a long time and I've struck out like 19 times. Uh, yeah. You and a lot of the other world, like you said, that's the new biggest that, that, that has there for a while. It actually kind of tapered off a little bit, but now they're yeah. kind of coming back to all yeah. kinds of pull bars. Dustin's asking, URA, USRA B mod, a 20 GRT, need more drive off. Already put wheel spacer in the left rear. How much lead is too much lead? Well, you have to remember, and that's one thing that people get confused on, because when you put lead in the car, you're doing that statically. So if you're on a half an inch of lead, you're still going to have two and a half inches of trail dynamically. So what you're trying to, what you're actually adjusting is how how much steer it has in a dynamic mode. And, um, you know, I've run as, on certain racetracks, I've run as much as uh, uh, half an inch. Now I've heard some guys go more than that, but uh, if you have to, in my opinion, if you have to go more than a half an inch, there's other issues you probably need to do. You know, I had a, had a guy come up today and, and he was asking me, his car's really good getting in. And he said, it goes through the corner really good, but it hangs the tail off. And my question was, I bet you have trail in the car, don't you? Yeah, yeah, so we got a half an inch of trail. You take that trail off, the car won't tail out on you coming off the corner. So, Jeff, on a UMP sport mod with a straight bar, straight Panhard bar, what do you say is a good starting angle? Well, like I said, as a rule of thumb, that 15 degrees is, is a pretty decent angle for, for those cars. Uh, but my opinion is the magic is on the rear end. The location of the rear end and, and like all of our stuff, the, the two measurements that we have for our customers is three and a half inches from the center of the axle housing down to the center of the um, Panhard bar, that's a good heat race setup. Racetrack's got a little grip to it. When you get to a really dry, slick racetrack where it's just really, really slick, we go to four inches. And then I do my angle from there, which usually ends up being about an inch above the housing on the left side. We're caught up. We're caught up. Awesome. Well, we've got about 10 more minutes here. So if there's any other questions, we sure be happy to answer them. Um, you know, we're... Got any cars in stock ready to rock and roll after the Malakote one? Or? Actually, we have a car in stock, believe it or not. It's uh, it's just a bare frame now. But uh, our schedule, once we get through the Super Nationals, kind of frees up. We've got some repair jobs. And Rocky's got some scale jobs yet to do. But uh, we could get that thing together pretty good, uh, or pretty soon. But uh, yeah, that Malakote card, of course, then after they lettered it with the, with the colors, man, that thing's bright. Shane, at what point is J-Bar split too much on a USRAB mod? 
Well, I still believe, you know, like on a J bar, they kind of measure it in inches. And I think on a B mod, seven inches, you get more than a seven inch split. And we still use that zero, um, zero to half inch below zero on those cars. A lot of people drop it down real low. And what happens is when you get that too low, it actually kind of binds the car up a little bit. It can cause you to lose a little bit of horsepower in the middle of the corner. And uh, I think it's a little more sensitive to traction coming off because of the, you know, how it kind of binds the car up. But I wouldn't go over seven inches. Normally we run six as our kind of our standard measurement. And this one here on the mod. What is a good starting point for a right rear spring for a slick track? Well, it kind of depends on the location of your springs and the angle that you have in them. Um, as a rule of thumb, the majority of the guys, and I don't know what tire you're running uh, and what your rules actually are. Did, was this a USRA car? US, uh, says AMOD. AMOD. Um, you know, like with a, uh, an IMCA type tire or that uh, American Racer G60, um, it's pretty common. A 225 is a very standard spring. Now, we've got some guys that I've told here, as slick as this racetrack has been, we went to, to some 250s in the right rear. Uh, 250 will tighten the car up getting into the corner. Um, it can free the car up a little bit coming off. But that's where I'll usually go with a little bit stiffer spring and I'll put some lead in the car so it tightens itself up off the corner. And the car rolls pretty good in the middle and, and it works pretty decent. Thoughts on the shock claiming that went on on Fairbury Saturday. Nick Hoffman won and was claimed. Well, I hadn't even heard that yet. Um, David, I have, buddies not, with Nick Hoffman, but. I have not heard that. Uh, um, I didn't even know they had a claim in the UMP, in yeah. UMP. Not sure. I'll have to reach out to my buddy Nick and see what's going on. Yeah, we'll have to check that out. That's all news to me. Um, we haven't seen a shot claim out here for, well, they did try a shot claim the other night at Marshalltown. And um, Tom Barry was going to get claimed. And he was so fast that night, he lapped up to the, or he lapped including the fifth place car. And the fifth place car was the one that was going to claim him because you have to be fifth or back to claim. Wow. But he lapped him. You have to be on the lead lap. So you have to be on the lead lap. He lapped him right the, on the white flag lap. So he's been pretty impressive. Oh my, yeah. Yeah, Tom Berry's been pretty awesome. His his program this year is just unbelievable. Well, seven minutes to go. Seven more minutes. Well, come on, people. You got any other questions? Um, I can't even think of anything really new that we got going on. Of course, we got our T-shirts here, and and uh, um, we got everything going on. Like I said, Bobby's just been services offered in the trailer uh, we've got our uh, ultra force machine just like chad has so we can check some pull bars if we need to um, set rear loads set rear loads and uh, so we've been doing you know, bobby's been doing a little bit of that um, he's been working on shocks we've got quite a bit of parts on hand lower control arms pretty much a lot of the stuff for the grt brand uh, or the Chevelle front end brand. We've got upper control arms, ball joints, you know, basically your suspension parts. We've got some bumpers, um, just kind of the normal stuff that we see in a week long worth of racing here at the Boone yeah. Speedway. This is a big event for us. We bring a lot of product. You sell a lot for us and Motorsports Warehouse here sells a lot mm -hmm. and we sell some out of the trailers. So it's a, it's a good event. We bring a ton of product here and people are excited to get it here while they're here and save the shipping on the way home. We brought yep. some ultra force machines. We sold a couple of those today. So uh, it's a, it's a large event. It's fun to be here. It, it is. It really is a blast. Like I said, the only thing that can be negative about this whole event is weather and you know, mother nature just kind of has a, has the way of putting the screws to some things at some time, but there's nothing we can control. And so we know they're going to get the show in sooner or later. It just all depends. We might even get to stay an extra day. You never know. Well, I like Iowa and my <laughs> Iowa friends, and I'm okay with hanging out another day. <laughs> yeah, what the heck? It doesn't bother me. I'm only 28 minutes from here, so I, I'm fine with that. 
I got here on Friday and or Saturday and been here since. Should you okay? Should you run the same size brake cylinders, master cylinders? Afco Ben says yes, right? Yeah, yes. and we've actually found that to be true. Um, both brakes, we run an inch. Um, we used to run seven eighths because we thought that that built more pressure. But what we found out was it built more pressure, but it, it, it changed the consistency and it would cause you know one part of the brake system to heat up a little faster than the other. And then the pedal would start to get soft. By going to just straight one inch has been a big help. The pedal stays firm all night long, and and actually uh, that actually works very well. Cody asks an IMCA Sport Mod if I run if I ran right rear bar angle negative, would you see a gain in going with stiffer right rear spring rate? Well, you'd probably have to because if you're running a negative angle, now you don't you know the the right rear bar is not helping to hold the car up so uh, it's going to want to fall easier so you're probably going to have to go with a stiffer um, spring the downside to it is, is by running a negative angle the car is going to try to it's 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 not going to steer as nice in the middle of the corner so even though you got the spring running the bar low is going to tighten it up getting in and the spring's going to tighten it up getting in. I'm just afraid that you could easily pick up a mid corner push with that negative angle. Uh, but if you got it through phase one and phase two, I'll guarantee you it would come off the corner like Jack the Bear if you got to that point. What do you load your right rear spring on a UMP four bar spring behind? Oh, man. Good question. That's a great question. And I'm not sure I have an answer for that spring behind. Not a clue. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, guys. I, I cannot, I can't give you any help on, on that one. Dave says, have fun at Boone. Stay dry. Thanks for the awesome show. You guys are awesome. How much are your t-shirts? Mine are 15. Bob's are? I think mine are 20, but, you know, we price match. So if you come over to get one, just say, Bob said you could have it for 15. Well, thanks, Todd. We appreciate all the uh, the kind comments. And, and like I said, we're, we really want to thank Motorsports Warehouse for uh, offering us this nice room here to do the show. and Solid internet connection. Yeah, solid internet connection is one thing that, if they could put a tower over here, it'd be really great because with all the people that are here and everybody using their cell phones, internet connection here is terrible. Yeah. Cool. Well, Shane, we look forward to seeing you there. That's going to be a, a good class. Uh, uh, we don't have everything as far as the speakers yet, but we're working on a couple different uh, speakers. Uh, you know, we'll have Kelly Shirock for sure. And, I'm going to try to get my old buddy Jordan Grabowski to come back. Um, we kind of discussed a few things that he needs to modify since he was there the last time, and, and he's he's where with that. And uh, I talked to a couple of his sport mod guys this week, and they're coming out to the sport mod school. So we appreciate it. And uh, Am I invited? I mean, why would you even ask such a thing? Oh, You're part know. of the show. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean that's just <laughs> that's just like my dog. I mean, I wouldn't go anywhere without my dog. I I couldn't do this show without you, Chad. Who oh, would yeah. answer all my who would who would correct all my dumb statements if it wasn't for Chad? We do have a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's very enjoyable, and we razz each other, and and uh, we should write a book, The Adventures of Bob Chad. You know, I tell you, I had a customer says, "You guys need to write a book on this stuff." And I'm thinking, "No, when would the hell would I do that?" Yeah, exactly. yeah, I'll do that. You maybe when I retire, I'll, I'll work on that book thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. But actually, when I retire, I'm going to do a little more fishing. I think. But we might get to that book. Yeah. But anyway, thanks, Joey, for your nice comments. Uh, you guys have been great. We look forward to talking to you every week, and. Uh, uh, have a safe week, everybody. And those of you who 
are here at the Boone Speedway, make sure you come over and, and say hi. And, and if you got any questions, we'll we'll do our best to give you some answers. And you know, I helped a couple guys out today that are diehard watching the show, guys. And so pretty exciting. Yeah, it's been a been a fun week so far. And thanks everybody. And we'll have maybe a show next week to recap it all. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna keep going. Yep, we'll keep going next week. Um, we're probably, once we get into October, we're probably going to take a couple, three weeks off. And then I've got some other plans that I don't want to release here. I'll tell you about it, Chad, but it's kind of top secret when we get into November. Some, of the, like other, top some of the other stuff that we're going to be doing in the future and, and people will have a, they'll really enjoy it. So I'm awesome. looking forward to that. I'm excited. Shut the camera off so I can hear about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks everybody.